and I'm at home and today I'm making two recipes. The first is a chimichurri flatbread and the second is romesco sauce to go with it. And you are not gonna believe how easy these two recipes are. I'm gonna start with the chimichurri flatbread. Um, it starts with flour and I'm going to add some water and I have all of my recipes published with my video, so you'll always be able to get the recipe. So don't worry about measurements because I measured a lot of this out, but a lot of times I don't measure because that's just the way I cook. So to the flour, I added some water and I'm adding olive oil and red wine vinegar, a pinch of red pepper flakes, a big pinch of salt, parsley, and I'm going to grate some garlic in it. So this is kind of, you know, it's a hybrid and I call this like a home cook's workhorse. I've been making flatbread almost every day. Lately, it is hugely popular in my house. Everybody loves it. It's so easy. It's, I call it five minute flatbread. It's the easiest thing in the world. And I've also been making chimichurri because I discovered this great recipe on Som TV, which is a new streaming service for food and wine. And I've kind of fallen in love with it. I've learned so much about wine while I've been home. And I found this chimichurri recipe on their site and I started making it. And then I had the idea to combine both. So now I have chimichurri flatbread and it is really, really, really good. So I'm excited to show you how I make it. So this is what it looks like in the bowl. I'm just mixing all of these ingredients together and it's really shaggy. It's a little bit too shaggy for me, so I'm adding a tiny bit more water. Um, I'm adding about a tablespoon and I'll see what that looks like. Eventually I'm gonna take this out of the bowl and knead it a few times. Yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit more water and that should do it. So I'm gonna move this aside and this will come together really, really quickly. I can smell it from here. Yeah, what do you smell, the garlic? Yeah, think? I think so. The, yeah, the... so chimichurri, it's an, Ar it's an Argentinian sauce. It's like a condiment and it's, it's mostly made from fresh herbs. I am using just parsley for this, but you can also add oregano, thyme, um, rosemary, or a combination. I mean, it's really a combination that makes up chimichurri. And then there's some red wine vinegar, olive oil. It's really all of the flavors and combinations that are pretty local to Argentina. And they typically serve it with steak because there's steak everywhere in Argentina and it's incredibly delicious. So I just really love the flavors of the chimichurri and I think it goes with everything. I think it goes with, you know, chicken. It's great in bread like this. So I am, so I finished my dough and what I'm going to do, I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but what I'm gonna do is split the dough up into six pieces because it's gonna be six pieces of flatbread and I shape it into balls or like little discs and I just kind of set it aside and let it rest a little bit. And that will kind of help all the ingredients meld together and the gluten start to work so that the texture of the bread is really great. I'm just wiping off my hands and I'm gonna set all of that aside and move over to the romesco. Now romesco is another sauce. This is like more of a Spanish sauce and this is something that goes great with fish traditionally, but I love it with everything as well. In fact, in our house, we eat it with steak all the time and my kids love it, right, Jimmy? You mm -hmm. love it. Really so good. it starts with a red pepper, um, a tomato, and some garlic. And these three things get broiled under uh, in the oven under the broiler. And I've already done that because it's really boring and I didn't want to make you bored. So I'm gonna just set that aside and show you what it looks like. I cut the pepper in half and I took out the seeds, but I kept the skin on. And the reason why it's good to keep the skin on is because it kind of protects the inside wow. of the pepper. It smells really good. Yeah, it's great. It, and it gives it like a smokiness. I think it's the smokiness that you're smelling. And then I cut the tomato in half and I put it cut side up 
because the inside gets really kind of charred and smoky as well. And then here's a little trick that I do. I keep my garlic cloves whole, but when I'm broiling them, I kind of nudge them underneath the pepper and that allows the garlic to not burn, it just steams. So I'm just peeling the outside of the garlic off the skin and I'm just popping it in here. And then I'm gonna to start to add all of my ingredients. Once this is all broiled and ready, everything else comes together like in two seconds. You're not gonna believe it. So that's done. And to that, I'm going to add some breadcrumbs. You can use any breadcrumbs you want. I use fresh because I bake so much bread. Oops, sorry, Jimmy. That's all right. Just got you with uh, the nuts. Um, I like to use sliced almonds, but you can use whatever you want. Um, I also love smoked paprika. It is such a great flavor enhancer and it's so easy to find at the store. If you can't find it, you can use paprika, but I think the extra smokiness is really, really pretty incredible. And then I have some red wine vinegar. I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of these same ingredients I used in my flatbread as well for the chimichurri. And then here's sort of like the secret ingredient. This is pomegranate molasses, and I'm putting a tablespoon of that right in here. Um, you can, pomegranate molasses, it's interesting, it's more of a Middle Eastern condiment. Um, I usually have no trouble finding it, but I couldn't find it at Whole Foods, so I made my own. <laughs> And all it is is a bottle of pomegranate juice, just cooked down, cooked down until it's nice and syrupy like this is. And so everybody can find pomegranate juice and make pomegranate molasses. It's got like a really interesting flavor. It's very concentrated. I'm gonna add some salt too. It's sort of like very sour and and kind of sweet and just like has a like a big big punch of flavor and I love it in this in this recipe. So I'm gonna turn this on. Olive oil. When you're making something like this in a food processor, it's always a good idea to scrape down the sides of the bowl. And the reason why the olive oil goes in last while the motor's on is because that helps emulsify with all of the other ingredients. It like puts air into everything. So I'm gonna turn this on again. This is pretty good. This looks delicious. Should we get a close up? Yeah. I'm going to give Whoa. it a little taste too. Here, Jimmy, can you taste it? Can you, yeah. ma can you manage? Let's see if it needs salt or anything. Mm. It's really good. I might put it, I might really like puree it a little bit longer. It's a little chunky. It's kind of a personal thing. And I might add a tiny bit more salt. But I'm really happy with it. So I'm gonna set that aside. So come back here and I'm gonna roll out my flatbread and cook it. It's amazing, the flatbread five minutes ago was like pretty kind of stiff. And the once it rests for a little bit, the flour in the flatbread really relaxes it. I'm just gonna roll it out a little bit. I'm not adding any extra flour to this. Boy, I have a messy workstation today. I hate that. <laughs> I'm so neat and I've got stuff all over the place. So anyway, I'm rolling out my flatbread kind of as thin as I can possibly get it. Um, it it's really, it's about an six or eight inches in diameter and it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. I actually think it's better when it's not a perfect circle. And now that I have it nice and thin, I'm going to cook it. Come over here. So I've had a cast iron skillet preheating. Um, I turned it on just before we went live and it's nice and hot. It is like ripping hot. And I'm gonna turn the heat up even higher. I had it preheating at medium. Now it's on high and it's just gonna start to cook, 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 cook. And 
The reason why it's so important not to put any oil in the skillet as it's heating, which is so typical for almost everything we cook, you know, this is um, what putting olive oil or a neutral oil or even butter in a pan really adds a lot of flavor and a lot of texture to food as it cooks. But you don't want to do it for flatbread because you want to get like that burnt char on the bottom of the flatbread that makes it so delicious. I mean, that's really what makes the flatbread. So right now, cooking this bread like this, undisturbed, is what's gonna make it incredible. And what's interesting is I only cook it on one side. I mean, it pretty much, it's so thin, it's gonna cook after one minute throughout. But if I cook it the same amount of time on the other side, it's gonna overcook the bread and it's gonna become like a tough cracker. And what you want is something that's sort of soft and pliable because then it's easy for dipping and that's really what flatbread's all about. So I'm gonna take a little peek. That's interesting, I didn't know that. Yeah, You're only supposed to do one side. Yeah, it's really, I mean, there are a lot of foods that cook really quickly that you only wanna cook on one side, scallops or another one. Okay, ready? Yep. Let's hope, hope, hope. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, it looks good. Gorgeous, huh? Mm-hmm. And you can see the flecks of the parsley and there's so much flavor in this. I'm really excited about this. Looks great. So we're done. I'm gonna turn the heat off. Let's bring this over here. That's what the other side looks like, by the way. Yeah, just as good. Yeah. So I'm gonna add this to my pile, but I'm gonna show you, I made a batch this morning. Anthony, don't make fun of me. And I'm gonna, Anthony's my friend who works at the Today Show. <laughs> He's always like, oh, you're making swaps. <laughs> Swaps are making a batch of something before you do a video, a cooking video, or any kind of cooking demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> and I just like to do it that way. So what can I say, Anthony? Um, oh, I did a terrible job plating this. But anyway, this is what the romesco looks like, and this is what the chimichurri flatbread looks like. And all we have to do now is have a little taste. So, Jimmy, mm -hmm. can you? Yes. Okay, me too. Let's just go right in. We won't double dip. We'll just try it once. Mmm. Huh. Mm. Delicious. Amazing. This was so easy to make. And everyone in my family loves it. I hope you'll make it at home. Mostly pantry staples. Thank you so much for being here. I loved cooking with you and I will see you again soon. Bye.